Today I'm going to take you on a virtual tour of one of my favorite places to photograph, Southern Patagonia. All right, so Hudson here. I'm just going to jump in. I want to share this, this virtual tour through Southern Patagonia with you. It's one of my absolute favorite places and this this trip was an amazing workshop with an incredible crew and I'm going to showcase a lot more of their images than my own in this little virtual tour. I'll show you some maps of where we went along on the trip uh, and, and and show you some of the, the personalities and fun that we had. I don't have images from everybody but I have a number of images from some of the people that have uploaded them to a shared Google Drive folder. We're all going to be sharing images in and uh, we're gearing up to do a, a big you know, private webinar amongst the people that were there so we can get back together, go through images. Uh, and, and I just, I've had enough people asking, wanting to see images from the trip and hear the stories that I thought I'd share this, this little travel log and kind of a, a just, just virtual tour through one of my favorite places in the world. So let's just jump in and I'll introduce you to the crew and show you some of the images and tell some of the stories of what happened to us. All right, I want to start off by introducing this just amazing crew. We got Bob Whiteman, Sam Scott, David Archer, Ken Sheepers, CJ Glenn, Bill Wallace, William Wallace, uh, Dave Hancock, Lynn Hackett, and Roman Schwartz. And everybody had done more than one workshop with me. This is kind of a hand-picked crew uh, to go down here, except Lynn Hackett, who David Archer, just was was you know he's he's my good buddy who helps me run these workshops and a lot of the time and uh, he was he was my second driver and assistant here on this particular workshop and he said Lynn was awesome and you were absolutely right Lynn you're welcome in any workshop anytime she's just an amazing amazing person all these people were fantastic I couldn't have picked a better crew to be out there with and I'm going to showcase a lot of their images along the way you can see you know this one's my image. Uh, I won't probably always say the name of who took these images. There's more of other people's images by far than mine. Um, like, for example, this is Dave Hancock's in Punta Arenas. That's where we started out. Most of us through, flew through Santiago, uh, where, where a little political unrest sort of sparked up right as we were headed into Chile. And I'm going to orient you here. You know, here's my hometown of Portland, Oregon. Uh, I'm in Google Earth, which is one of my favorite scouting tools. And I'm just going to type in Punta Arenas, Chile, and let's, let's fly out and go over to Punta Arenas. So leaving Oregon, the Pacific Northwest, rolling clear around to the other side of the planet, all the way down to the jumping off point for Antarctica, Porta Natalis, I mean Port Punta Arenas, which is a port city here on the Magellan Strait. I'm going to back out a little bit here. I'll back out a ways and then kind of pull back in. This is the southern tip of South America. This is uh, Tierra del Fuego down here. This is the Magellan Strait. Punta Arenas is right there on the Magellan Strait, one of the last cities, actually the last city in South America that's not part of the island of chain of Tierra del Fuego. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit and we'll keep coming back to this and I'll show you where we're going on the map. Basically, our trip is from Punta Arenas up through the little town of Porta Natalis on, on this really gorgeous lake into Parque Nacional Torres de Paine, which is Chile's, one of Southern Patagonia's most beautiful national parks. The mountains, lakes, rivers, wildlife are spectacular here. And then across the border up into El Chaltan, which is up here uh, on Glaciers National Park, Los Glaciers in Argentina. So we cross in the border here. This white line is the border between Argentina and Chile. Uh, and then spending a bunch of time in El Sultan, even a little backpacking and hiking, and then driving back around Lago Vedma to Lago Argentina and the town of El Calafate and the Perito Marino Glacier to, to end our trip, and everyone flew home from El Calafate. About 2,000 kilometers total, total driving on this trip and just epic scenery. So. I'll, I'll bounce back here to kind of reference where we are from time to time. So here in Punta Arenas, uh, you know, most of the political unrest in Chile was going on in Santiago. Punta Arenas was relatively mild by comparison, although there were certainly peaceful demonstrations by day and a certain limited amount of smashing of bank windows and, 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 and noise and, and fires in the street at night where we stayed in the hotel uh, and sipped good wine and, and, and felt perfectly safe. 
Um, I wouldn't want it to be running around on the streets just then, though. I love the mosaics that they have in the Chilean towns. And, and Dave Hancock, this one is one of my favorites. I just love the way the local people are interacting. It looks like where does the mosaic end and the people begin. It's a really, really awesome shot. I love the dog and, and just the moment that you captured here. I love how you're out interacting with the locals. <laughs> this is a great shot of the kids in town. Uh, the food's phenomenal. Seafood in Chile is my recommendation, but you can't go wrong with the lamb or the beef either. Um, here's some of the peaceful demonstrations during the day in Punta Arenas. Cool shot. That My good friend Ken Sheeper's taking this shot. Here's a little phone video I shot. Um, you know, nobody upset with us. Nobody bothering us. People actually waving. Um, some some, uh, some some just, you know, it was, it was fun to go check out. Um, they were doing some graffiti on public art. I love the shot that Sam got of the public works cleaning it back up, pressure washing the paint off the, the statue of Magellan in the public square. But, you know, we were all happy to get out of town. Most people were just there for one day. There were a few people that had planned on spending time in Santiago who uh, sort of abandoned ship, flew down to Punta Arenas early and hung out with, with David and I as we got ready for the workshop and we did a little photography around town and, and took in the peaceful demonstrations. Now, probably Santiago, not such a good place to be. So here's, here's Dr. Hackett, Lynn, uh, with her most basic of kits. She's got a 70 to 200, a 2470, and I don't know, it's a like 100 to 400 type lens, uh, all lined up here. Uh, just in case whatever she might need to encounter. That kit was basically strapped in with her at all times. She rarely went anywhere without a big lens in her bird book, and I just adored spending time with, with you, Lynn. It was such an awesome, awesome trip. Here we are in Porta Natalis. So again, we did that, that big three-hour drive from, from Punta Arenas up into Porta Natalis before traveling on into Torres de Piney National Park all here in Chile. And uh, Punta Arenas, or Porta Natalis, has good food, fun stores. It's kind of an adventure town, you know, lots of gear for people going into the mountains. Beautiful mountains along the lake here, black swans to photograph, usually dramatic skies. That's one thing in Patagonia. You're guaranteed some weather and some dramatic skies, and it's constantly, constantly changing. You can go through all four seasons in one day, and I think people were skeptical of that. I told everybody, bring layers. Everyone was glad that they did. Layers and stone bags for the tripod, just for when the winds come up. And then we went out to Torres de Piney. These are sort of some of the fabled peaks of Torres de Piney. You got this killer granite cliffs with this black metamorphic capstone, uh, crazy shapes. This is Lago Pijo, and this is a place where I had kind of organized for the workshop to stay, this island hostel in the middle of Lago Pijo, where if you woke up and went to bed, you're in the place where you want to be photographing at dawn and sunset. And sadly, the night before we started heading to stay here, they shut it down for some kind of a code violation and shifted us into this really spectacular spa hotel that probably should have cost four times more than we paid uh, for this hotel, but they moved everybody into it. It's about 40 minutes away. It was really beautiful. I mean, it was a, a fantastic, you know, four-star spa hotel uh, with a view of these mountains, but it, it took a little bit of a drive to get in and photograph them close up. Uh, you know, so next workshop, we'll get onto the island. Uh, it's really all about location, location, location. But I got to say, we all kind of enjoyed, uh, enjoyed the spa hotel at the same time. So it could have been worse. Um, and here's, you know, some of the work. Bob, uh, great, great shot by Bob Whiteman here from up on the hill above the public campground. Um, Ken Sheeper's shooting the road to Rio Sereno where we were staying. This is right by the, 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 the swanky hotel that we got put up in. We still had a beautiful view of the mountains. Um, some, some Andean condors Ken captured here, a juvenile and an adult in flight. Uh, Bob, lovely shot of the cascade. You know, we, a lot of us had kind of given up over photographing the color in the other direction. Uh, and, and Bob hung in by the cascade and got that moment when it turned pink over, over the waterfalls. And I don't have photos from everyone yet. We're putting together 
a Google Drive folder with everyone's images. Not everyone's uploaded, but I, I know lots of people out there want to see images from here, and I want to share some of the cool stuff that's been uploaded. We're all planning to get together uh, in, in a sort of a, a private webinar just for people that were on this workshop so we can look through each other's images and catch up because I, I really miss everybody on this workshop after, after, after spending so much great time with them. There's Sam photographing along, uh, along the Rio Torres de Piney. Here's horses headed into the Towers Hotel where we spent one night on the other side of the mountains. Uh, we had a lot of dramatic sky. This is a cool one by Dave Hancock. Lynn catching a buzzard eagle in flight. Bob, I love the drama here. You know, we really didn't have any blue sky, calm weather days in Torres de Piney. We had a lot of drama. And the mountains would be intermittently behind clouds, out of clouds, flowing, you know, clouds flowing through them. It was like a time lapsing dream. I can't wait to develop some time lapse from this. Uh, but I, I just love this shot, Bob. I remember we, we saw just the, these peaks coming out of the clouds, and the drama just pulled the vans over on a gravel road and, and started shooting. And I love this black and white, really nice treatment. One of the cool things we did this is CJ Glenn's shot of ice in Lago Gray as we took a a boat through all these icebergs and went out to where the, the big glacier gray is calving uh, into Lago Gray. And it was cool, dramatic weather, great light, nice overcast uh, for shooting that. Let's see, did I just, oh no, I, I skipped it. Yeah, there's, there's another cool shot by Dave of Lago Pijo. I know we'll have some more images from that glacier trip. Uh, but, you know, we also had some cool wildlife. I love this image that, that Dave got of this bird. There were all these little insects on the surface of the water, and these, these birds were just coming in and, and, and grabbing them off the water. And this is a great shot. This is another example. Dave was shooting with a Nikon, uh, I think a Z6. It might have been a Z, I think it's a Z6. And that camera, if you use your autofocus modes correctly, will capture fast action. And this was fast action. Um, <laughs> we had guanaco, of course, you know, I told everybody that guanacos are sort of like baboons in Africa. If you see people photographing them, they haven't been around for very long. But we did have a really fun day with a whole herd of guanaco, and they were out rolling in dust patches. They were as happy to see the sun as we were. And there's Lynn with her big lens. And this is out on the boat, Sam and I. Part of this trip for Sam was a, was a birthday trip. His wife actually let him come to Patagonia with me for his birthday instead of being with his family. So we were all celebrating Sam's birthday. There we are photographing Glacier Gray. Great shot, Dave. Again, you can see who's photographed. This is one of mine, but you know, a lot of these are just phone photos of mine. Um, there's, there's Bill Wallace. There's, there's a group of us going through images on the boat. Really cool shot of the ice, Dave. There were so many abstracts to capture, and the light was so nice. There's Roman with his uh, his light kit for photographing off the boat. Everybody just sharing images. It was a really, really fun day. I know they weren't necessarily supposed to leave us out as long as we were on the out, outside the weather decks as we were going back, and our photo group was was all behaving itself so well and having so much fun, they didn't, they didn't dare make us go back inside. <laughs> Here we are walking back along the beach there at Lago Gray. Those big icebergs are just amazing. Now, it was windy in Patagonia. This is what happens when you roll down the window sometimes. And I've got some video and stills to sort of showcase that. Here, there's some camera roll in this. This is from my, my Google Pixel uh, 3XL. And it, this just shows you one morning when we were up on this hill, look at Ken's pants. I mean, that sort of tells the whole story. We had some days where it really blew. And what I got to say about this group is, you know, every single person being at the van at 5 a.m. to get out and photograph Dawn in high, high winds, you know, conditions where we're not sure what's going to happen. And, and I just couldn't be prouder of this entire group. And you all got some great stuff. You know, we had some drama. This is a morning where we actually, the weather looked so bad when David and I woke up and, and checked it at 4.30 a.m. We sort of called things off and Lynn woke up and saw there was a little bit of light and dashed from the hotel down to the river, the Rio Sereno, and got this beautiful shot. And, so, and there's more. I can't wait to see some of the other stuff that she photographed. Um, and I was sleeping. I was looking at the back of my eyelids. So it really does, you know, being out there is the key. I love this image. There you go. That's how windy it gets in Patagonia. This is the, the Chilean flag torn into shreds. There's only half of it left. And this is the Patagonian flag. 
book these flags started out twice as long as this. Um, you get the idea. You <laughs> This gives you an idea. This is along uh, one of the lakes and tourists to Piney going to photograph a waterfall. And it was just a crazy mess, but we had a good time. Here's some cool uh, just in-camera time lapse that, uh, that Dave shot to just so show the weather flowing through here while we're out. We got a little bit wet from time to time. Nobody had any major malfunctions with gear. We had a camera dropped at one point. My camera came down in the wind, luckily into grass. Once again, proving the durability of, of the Nikon Z cameras. It came down from up high on the tripod with a 70 to 200 and nothing was broken. Just kept working fine. You know, one key when you're out there getting wet in inclement conditions is open everything up. You can see my battery door is open and empty. My, my um, memory card slot is open. The lens is expanded. I've got my filters off. Everything's sitting on that heater with the heat turned on so it's just nice and warm. All the stuff that I was working with, filters, you name it, lens caps, everything, the filter nest my backpack sitting next to it, my, my waterproof jacket, my cleaning cloth, everything just kind of drying there. Um, we had lots of crazy weather and it makes for cool drama. And you get to see how the wildlife is interacting in those conditions. That The Guanaco, Caracara birds were all around us, really cool shot, Ken. Um, and we had a lot of fun. You know, I remember this morning we were out hiking around and the mountains were popping in, popping out. I, I captured this pano Actually, uh, this is one of the few panos that I've stitched together from this trip. I just love these flowering bushes. And this one, it, it kind of reminds me, you know, here, here's what I'm focused in on. And at the same time, look at what Sam's photographing. This was the same exact moment, uh, well, or, you know, within moments of each other. I just, just love how everybody sees things a little bit differently. And that's one of the things that I always do on these workshops. You know, we, we did a little bit of less of going through everyone's images, so I'm really excited to all get together online and go through images as we have time to edit them up during this holiday season uh, with this awesome crew of people. But we were even involving the bartender at our, at our hotel at Rio Serena. <laughs> she wanted to see all of our images and was popping in with us all to photograph these. Uh, thanks for taking this shot, Sam. This, this just shows how we were spending, you know, the middle of the day. Beers, good food, and photographs, and occasionally the glass of wine. We ate some really good food on this trip. We saw some cool wildlife. You know, it's always fun to see flamingos with snow on the mountains behind them. South America is such a trip. Great shot. That was a cool, that was Dave Hancock, again, shooting the Z camera. Here's Lynn uh, with her long lens. I can't wait to photograph some of my images from that day. And then we moved in up to El Shaltan. This was a, a big move, actually. I'm going to jump back over. Uh, we actually drove from Parc National, Torres de Piney here, uh, and, and crossed the border uh, somewhere right in here. There's a little tiny town, Cerro Castillo, that has a, a cool place to get food and stock up on snacks and uh, and then we cross the border into Argentina, and there's a little tiny, tiny town in the middle where we got some fuel, and we drove up uh, right along the edge of Lago Argentina without quite going over to El Calafate, and then along the edge of Lago Vedma and around to El Chaltan, and this is all part of Glaciers National Park, Los Glaciares in Argentina. Uh, so we're up in El Shaltan, which is the town that sits right below the, one of the most famous peaks of Patagonia, the, the famous from the, well, a couple of the most famous peaks, uh, Cerro, Cerro Torre and Fitzroy. You don't see Cerro Torre here, but this is Mount Fitzroy and the road leading into El Shaltan on the Fitzroy River. And uh, we, we started out there with quite a bit of cloud, high wind, but really beautiful, beautiful light, despite the fact that the mountains were, were mostly obscured. They kept poking out little bits at a time. And so we back up from town to a place where we could really photograph what was going on in the sky from all different angles. It was cold. It was windy. Here's Ken Sheepers geared up for a cold, windy morning. Um, but you see, you know, by going back where we were, Whatever is happening with the clouds, here you see just the edge of Fitzroy popping out of the cloud and these crazy lenticulars forming. Really nice shot, Ken. Ken got addicted to time lapse. Since I've been talking to Ken about time lapse, he's just the time lapse machine. We we're always joking, where's Ken? Oh, he's shooting a time lapse. You know, everybody's ready to go, and Ken's like, just a little bit more. 
Um, he's originally from South Africa. He's got a great accent and a great attitude and just tons of energy. One thing that sucks in time lapse is when you've got any dust on your sensor. That's really tough to get rid of that. You have, you'll always see the, that, that on your sensor. So you want to make sure you're blowing your sensor out. Um, it's really tough with time lapse because you can't just go zap it like you can uh, with the still image. Here we all are all are all out kind of along that highway to El Shaltan on this hilltop where you could really shoot unobstructed in any direction depending on what the clouds are doing. It's beautiful long lens work. Um, you know, one of the things you can do there is work with a long lens and get to these little extractive landscapes of whatever beautiful is happening with the light. And, and here's an awesome example uh, of Bob Whiteman doing just that. You know, this is a long lens shot. I love the sheep in the foreground of the scene. Uh, that light is just spectacular, and that's Lago Vedma in the distance. I've spent some time on the other side of Lago Vedma shooting back towards the mountains, and it's just it's just such a beautiful area. Here's Dave Hancock's shot of those clouds up over the, the massive. Now, normally, you've got Fitzroy over here, El Shaltan is over in here, and you've got Cerro Torre. We spend a lot of time talking about where the mountains would be if they weren't buried under these beautiful clouds, and instead just shooting the clouds in the foreground peaks. This is an image I got while I was gone. You know, the one thing about these workshops, the workshops are so amazing, but you do miss some of those little moments. This is, this is my boy Pike as an elephant and my little girl Pepper as a lion. He's three, she's two. Uh, and, and it was a bummer not to be at Halloween, but luckily my family, Stacy kept me abreast with, with images shared on uh, Google Photos, but too cute, I had to share that. You know, so the weather, like I said, the peaks would come out, the peaks would disappear. This is Mount Fitzroy, uh, one of the most fabled climbs of South America and one of the famous big wall climbs of the world. Um, we, you know, one of the things you do when it's cloudy and when you've got rough weather or wet weather is go photograph waterfalls. Here's a waterfall below Mount Fitzroy, um, Dave Hancock shooting it. And then, you know, we got, we got a forecast for the weather to get a little bit nicer. And we had brought gear and all talked about it. Everybody was on board with doing an overnighter, not a super arduous, but a long trek, you know, 10 kilometers in to uh, one of my favorite places to photograph, Lago uh, Torre, right below Cerro Torre, uh, on this, this beautiful ice tarn, this glacial lake, marine dam lake. Uh, and there's Lynn hiking up, there's Dave up above town, there's all of us. Uh, on our hike in up at the first view where we can see back to where you would normally see Cerro Torre. Again, we have weather, but the forecast was for it to be clearing this day. Um, and we went in, set up camp, hung out. It's cloudy. I think everyone's mood was like, yeah, sure, it's going to be clear tomorrow. Sure, we're going to see the mountains tomorrow. <laughs> we ate some, some pretty good freeze-dried food, going light here again. A bunch of these guys hadn't camped in like 20 years, and I think everybody had a blast. You know, we brought good gear. We had a local guide with us, Gaston, one of the most amazing, fun guys that I've spent time with in the mountains in a long time. Absolutely loved him. Here we are boiling up some water along the river. And, you know, the night that we're there, I'm saying, this is the beginning of Cerro Torre. There's this block here, and then this ramp goes up, and then the tower's up above, and... We're all sitting waiting to see what will happen at sunset. We got some nice, uh, you see everybody stretched out here along the edge of the lake. We got some nice blue hour shots. Um, this is the route for people climbing Cerro Torre. Cerro Torre is one of the most insane climbs in the world. It wasn't even successfully climbed until the 70s. It, it lasted much, much longer than the North Wall, the Eiger, decades longer. Um, but, uh, and it's a controversial climbing story. There's a lot of lore about it. If you want a good story, read, read some things about Cerro Torre. But this is how you, you have to get across the river with the steel cable, with the, the, uh, the, the, the traverse, so Tyrolean traverse. And they've got a warning there not to do it. So, you know, we hung out there till blue hour, uh, and, and this is a really cool shot by, by Dave Hancock of blue hour blooming there. And, Went back to camp in the dark. It always kind of amazes me what Google's Pixel's night sight is capable of. This is shot with my phone in the dark. Um, and then the next morning when we got up, sure enough, the clouds had gone away and there's Cerro Toy standing over the lake. Uh, and this is, this is Ken's 30 second shot of stars over the lake. I can't wait to develop some of my stuff. And this is another phone shot of our cameras set up as the wind dies and the reflections come out pre-dawn light. Um, everybody got out there. This is Bob sitting on the edge of the lake, geared up. 
And then that dawn light hit. This is a beautiful image by Bob. I absolutely love it. The low angle with those icebergs floating in the foreground. Um, here's, here's one by Dave Hancock. Awesome shot. You know, the same, same two pieces of ice, two different perspectives and takes on it. I love how everybody's looking at things differently. Ken looking down on, on Sam and I. Sam and I went to shoot an ATS. It was his birthday this morning, and unfortunately, I sort of screwed up on the audio, so I'm afraid we're not going to be sharing that one. The audio is really, really rotten, um, so, you know, my bad. Every now and then, you're tired, you're cold, and you make a mistake. And when we got back to camp, Gaston had brought champagne by surprise with cups for all of us to celebrate Sam's birthday. I mean, what, a, what an awesome thing in camp. Uh, and we all warmed up, ate breakfast, packed up. This is where I actually slept. I, I brought tents for just about everybody, although Bill Wallace brought, brought his tent as well. And then I brought my, uh, my little really good outdoor research bivy. And we all headed down in a beautiful, beautiful day. Uh, great shot, Dave. Um, and back to town and civilization and coffee and key lime pie and beer. And then, you know, we, we had some decent weather and we hiked around and we scouted and we, we, one of the things we scouted is this spectacular waterfall that's way off the beaten track uh, that, that uh, not, many, not many people know about uh, that's right below Mount Fitzroy. It's one of my favorite places to photograph. And this is a, a cool shot by Sam of Ken out there. We went and kind of scouted it, thought about how to get there for dawn because it's a dawn scene. It's, it's a shot where you're facing to the west with the east, you know, first light would be at your back. Um, some cool shots by Ken there of the waterfall. Uh, Sam standing at the waterfall. And then we did go back. The last morning that we were in town in El Shaltan, we had a beautiful dawn and a group of us, CJ, and Bill and Sam and I all, all went back up here and, uh, and photographed at dawn. It was quite a hike. We had to leave at 3.30 in the morning to get up there for dawn uh, and do a little, do a little wilderness work, um, and it was well worth it. While the rest of the crew who wasn't really feeling like doing a second big hike in two days uh, at 3.30 in the morning got up for dawn and went out from town and got those views of Fitzroy and Saratoria with first light on them. Uh, I love this, uh, this shot by Sam with the 20 millimeter Nikon 1.8. This is my favorite Sunstar lens. So, so this, this is a fun, fun shot. I'm not sure exactly when he, when he nabbed this one, but I love it. Um, and then we drove into El Calafate. So if you take a look, we were up here in El Shaltan. We had to drive back around Lake Lago Vedma. It's about a two hour drive. And then around this Eastern tip of Lago Argentina to the town of El Calafate, which is a really, really fun town. Uh, and it's not far from the Perito Marino Glacier, which comes out calving into the, uh, into the, the lake back in here. So a, a great tourist attraction. I'll show you some images from that we, we hit the last day that we were there. This is, this is basically where we all uh, stayed. We stayed one night together. A couple of us, a few of us, David and Lynn and I stayed another night uh, and uh, before flying home. From, and kind of breaking up, but we did go to the Perito Marino Glacier. We did go in and eat some really good food, drink some great beer. Ken got his barbecued traditional style lamb dinner that we'd all been <laughs> been uh, been joking that he had to have before we left, and it was really worth it, along with a lot of great Malbec. Um, we had Argentinian beef uh, stew that was just incredible on my last night there. And we went to see the Perito Marino Glacier, which is a really, really wonderful, wonderful place to go walk around and tour. There are miles of decking built into the rocks with this view and you're not rushed. It's not like a boat trip where you're looking out at the ice. You have plenty of time. And Bob, I love this shot of the way the glacier is wrapping around the rock. Um, really fun shot by Dave as CJ and I. Look at that. It's just so cool. Another great shot by Dave Hancock, the Frida Marino. Bill Wallace, cool shot of us all working. And I love this shot by Dave Hancock. Just look, I love the reflection in the water with the just the, the lines of it. I love this this just this just piece in the middle pulling me in and all these little bits of ice. Can't wait to see more of that stuff. 
So I'll just leave it with some fun shots of us all goofing around. Here we are on the road getting that road shot leading towards those crazy mountains. It was an incredible, incredible crew, a wild time. There was lots of fun, lots of weather, lots of good food, lots of great light. I still, I still love that beer. I would buy that beer here, the uh, Tourist of Piney by Astral, if they sold it here. Um, we had some great dawns, didn't we? And I'll end on this just gorgeous black and white image of Fitzroy by Bill Wallace. You know, this was on a day when, you know, <clears throat> we were sort of organizing to get ready to gear up and do our hike into Lago Torre. I was in town organizing with Gaston, the guide, and Bill went out for a hike. That's, that's Bill's an amazing hiker and needed to get out, and he climbed up into the high country around Fitzroy. Uh, on this kind of transitional weather day and the, the clouds lifted and he got rewarded with this just gorgeous, gorgeous image. Uh, I love the black and white treatment. It was an amazing, amazing trip. I think just going through the slideshow, you get that impression with a fantastic group of people. And I miss each and every one of you that was with me on that trip. Uh, and I want to thank everyone that was there for coming. You know, it, if you get a chance to go to Patagonia, go. Make sure you give yourself enough time because the weather, the weather can get rough for you know a block of days at a time, and and so that's one of the reasons why I made this workshop a little bit longer. I wanted to make sure that we would see it in all of its moods and have a chance to photograph all of those mountains, uh, and and we were rewarded with you know we we had our share of bad weather, but we had our share of good weather too. Uh, and again, such a such a great crew. I'll be going back there in the years to come, not next year, but but one of these years again soon. So if you're interested, hit me up, uh, and I'll put you on the advanced list for that. Uh, again, I, I've got still have some slots left for Kauai, and I still have some spots remaining in the house that I'm staying in uh, in Princeville. It's a pretty pretty nice pad. So jump in. I'll put a link to that. That's in February. And then there's a couple spots remaining in Cuba in March, and I'll be releasing more 2020 workshops really, really soon. Uh, there's Costa Rica. There's a bunch of others coming, too. Some fun stuff. So look out for those. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for sharing this with your friends. I hope everybody's having an awesome holiday. Make sure that you send those questions, send those comments in you know, via email here in the comment section on YouTube. However you want to get in touch with me, I'm easy and, and I love the photo conversation. So keep that, keep that communication flowing. That's what this is all about. Thanks so much. We'll see you next week.